understand where we've gone wrong, where we are going wrong, in terms of selection. Remember, we want to select efficient gas converters. So how do we select them? By selecting the bull that is grown fastest. Will the fastest growing bull with a grass test or a feedlot test, will that bull be the most efficient? In real terms, grass conversion? Will he or not? Not necessarily, no. Because you see, the fastest growing animal is not necessarily the most efficient. I mean, look here. That animal has to go so much more faster to be equally efficient. Yes, and if I can get me go back here. Unfortunately, I use a, I will use pounds or kilograms to explain frame size. Okay. Now these these would be 660 frame size cows. I'm not suggesting you should have them. And the my conditions, they'd be very profitable. Like about my best 660 pound frame size cows won't weigh 660 pounds. They weigh at least 800, maybe 900 pounds. Why is that? Because it's more efficient. The intake is so much higher, the relative intake. So it has to go somewhere to production. But you're right, uh, Jim, the, this is just for, for exercise purposes. I'm not suggesting that we should, I'm not suggesting definitely we should produce light cattle. I'm saying the smaller and heavier, the better. So I'll figure that one out. The smaller and heavier, the better. Okay. So what does this mean is, if you, if you go and buy a bull from a bull uh, breeder, how are you going to identify the most efficient grass converter? You go to a conventional stud breeder. How are you going to identify the bull that's the most efficient grass converter? Okay, how, you, how, how will you identify that, uh, Dennis, with the figures I give you? What do those figures mean? All those confusing figures. I'm not against performance testing. I'm against using the inappropriate criteria. And that's exactly what we're doing. So we have all these EPA figures, we have indexes. What do those indexes mean? in terms of what we just discussed here now. So the question again is, if you go to buy a bull from a breeder, and let's assume he has contemporary groups, more or the same age, they have, they have the same treatment. How would you identify, let's say we have 100 bulls, how would you identify that most efficient grass converting bull? Don't you want the largest weight per frame size? Yes, that's exactly right. Because the faster an individual animal grows relative to its size, the more efficient it is. Okay. How I describe it, I use the analogy of a five pound packet of sugar and a 10 pound packet of sugar. That animal that you're gonna uh, require will be eight pounds stuffed into a five pound packet of sugar. The other animals, the other extreme uh, 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 size efficiency will be nine pounds in 10 package. Nine pounds is more than eight. But eight and five is far more efficient than nine and ten. So how will that animal look? Forget those figures. Don't look at those figures. Those figures mean nothing. Exactly. And which animals are discriminated against? Which bulls are generally discriminated against? The smaller, more stockier bulls. Exactly. Those are the most efficient bulls you can get. For two reasons. One, that they are efficient grass converters. The other one is that the hormonal balance is such that they stop growing in the long bones very early. So sexually, they're also early maturing. And that magnifies that. So that fullest package you can identify, that is by far the most efficient bull. Okay, are there any questions up to this stage? Yeah. Is everyone happy with what you've done? Okay. 
This chart is kind of confusing, though. This one? Yeah, for me it is. The more I think about it, the more confused I get. Now, the, the numbers in the blue numbers in the middle, mm -hmm. those are the units of energy, correct? Per pound of kilogram of gain. Pound of gain. Per, per kilogram. Per kilogram of gain. Right. Well, on the left hand column is that the average AD. Perfect. So the 150 kilogram animal, is that what that is, the top row? Right. That's right. 150 kilogram animal. Right? He is. Uh, takes 250 units of energy to gain 0.1 no. kilogram? No. One kilogram. One kilogram. It takes 25 units to gain one kilogram, point one. To get a kilogram, you have to multiply by 10. To get a kilogram of total gain, you have to multiply by 10. Okay, in that one, in that window, mm. one window down, you multiply by five. That's right. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, that 250, is that, is that his total okay. energy? That's a, it's total energy over 10 days to gain one kilogram of gain. Everything, cruise maintenance. As I said, your maintenance requirement for a day would be 22 units. So he's only, only got three units per day for growth, and that's why he only gains 0.1. Here he's got 38 units, that's why he gains 0.1 kilogram. It's very important to understand this very clearly. No, it's very simple. The, every, the figure in each one of these blocks here, written in blue, refers to the energy required for one kilogram of gain. Over 10 days? Well, it depends. That's what you said, over 10 days. No, it depends. It's if it's gaining 0.5. In this one box, it's 10 days, because that's 0.1 of the reference 10 days, but it's 0.1 Yeah, it's gaining 0.5, half a kilogram, so it requires two days of growth. So it refers to a total, it's the only way we can compare the two variables of size and growth rate. So the requirement per day here is 25 units. The requirement per day here is 50 units. And this refers to one kilogram, this refers to 0.1, so we have to multiply by 10 to get to one kilogram. So we multiply 25 by 10 to get 250. I'm guessing it's 22 years. So it'll be 22 here as well. Now, what would the maintenance be? Yeah. Like a 200 pounder? I mean, 200. I'm guessing. I'm guessing maybe 27. Yeah. I don't have the figures in, in my head, but it's something like that. So what it means is that you have 10 days of of maintenance, which is useless in terms of putting money in our pocket, but it's essential to keep the animal alive. Yeah, you only have one day of maintenance. That's why it's so more efficient, so much more efficient. So each one of those use like three units to gain that tenth of a... I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what... I, to me it's not important. To me what is important is a figure here that refers to a kilogram of gain. So we can see the two variables of growth rate and size how that affects efficiency. And we came up with those four conclusions. The faster individual animal gains, the more efficient it is. At equal growth rate, similar growth rate, the larger animals are less efficient, the smaller animals are more efficient. So there's a required growth rate in terms of size for equal efficiency. Here we see it very clearly. 2, 300, 400, 500, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 gives equal efficiency. So there's a direct relationship between required growth rate and size. So animals of different size, which you'll get in the herd, have to grow in proportion to the size to be equally efficient. But the problem is they can't eat in proportion to the size. And that is why your smaller animals have advantage and your large frame animals are genetically handicapped. And the genetic handicap is that their relative intake is lower. I'd, I'd like to 
I wouldn't like to carry on if you don't understand. Maybe I can do it differently. I think as we, as we go on, you probably understand. Just think of one thing. That is a total energy or total feed or total grass required for one kilogram of gain. So the more that's required, the less efficient it is. So the lower the figure is, the more efficient that at those two variables, size and growth rate is. If you, in your notes there, you've got this uh, figure there as well. Again, I use a different size animals. I'm talking about kilograms here. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't use large cattle or you should use, shouldn't use small cattle or you should use small cattle. It's just, this is just for comparative purposes to prove a point. So again, it's 300, 400, 500, 600. And what this refers to is the, the intake in terms of energy requirement and actual intake. I'm assuming here now that your smallest cow is on very poor grazing, where your intake per day equals the requirement. Okay, so you can see that two bar graphs are exactly the same. Okay, now if that is the case, if you have larger animals under those conditions, there's going to be a discrepancy because, between what's required and what the actual intake is. Is that just because of its inability to ingest that much? Yes, yeah. If you had a very good environment, let's say you had an extremely good environment, where this large cow could ingest enough grass to, uh, to satisfy requirements, then what you'd have here, you have an excess of energy. And this cow is going to just become more fatter, or you're going to have to carry more to keep the body condition down. So under all circumstances, the, the smaller frame cow, relatively speaking, is much more efficient than the larger frame cow. But under very good nutrition, we can get away with larger frame animals. They will still be producing efficiently in terms of their own requirements, in terms of growth, body condition, and fertility. But your smaller animals will have an excess of energy anyway. So you have to feed them less, or you have to carry more of them. So you're going to produce more with a smaller frame, whether it's low octane grass or high octane grass. Okay, so this is what I'm showing here. Let's assume now this is under poor octane grazing. So there's going to be a deficiency in terms of size the larger the animal is. Okay, now let's say this is your cow size. And I told you earlier that intake varies with metabolic size. And it's just a, don't get um, confused or intimidated by that uh, term metabolic size. All it is, it's your 300 or 400 or 500 or 600 to the power of 0.75. If you've got a calculator, you can do it. Has anyone got a calculator to the power of 0.75? Just work it out. 300 to the power of 0.75 will give you that figure. Those figures and 600 will give you 120. So what it means is that although this is a variation in actual size, this is the variation in actual intake. This is the variation in size. This will be the variation in intake. Okay. So what it means is that although this cow is twice the size of that cow, her intake is not twice as much. It's not 144 as opposed to 72 here. It's 120. And that is because of mammal, different sized mammals, as I told you earlier. Let's take sheep and cattle. There's a big difference. Maturity rate, and efficiency of grass conversion because it's a small animal. Now, within a herd of cattle, you get exactly the same because of this. So let's assume now, to make, to make my um, point clear to you, is that the absolute intake of a 300 kilogram cow under these conditions is 7.2 kilograms a day of grass. If that is the case, then the large cow, 600 kilogram cow, under exactly the same conditions, will take in 12 kilograms of grass not 14.4. Okay, so all, although a larger cow eats more grass, relative to, to her size, she has a lower intake. So her relative intake 
is much lower. We can do it in another way of doing it. If your uh, intake in terms of body weight was 2.4% here, which would be the case, it decreases the larger the animal is to 2% 2% there as opposed to 2.4%. This is the percentage intake relative to size. 2.4, 2 2.25, 2.08, 2.2. Now the difference between here and there, what is the difference in terms of percentage wise? It's 20%. Okay. I'll just wait for you to... So the relative intake is 20% difference. It's 2.4% here, although she has a lower intake, higher intake, it's only 2% of body weight. Okay, so the difference between here and here is 20%. So what does that mean? Is it, surely it means that this cow, under those conditions, must be, have a 20% better body condition. Okay, now we can work out the relative intake by dividing uh, the intake into that, or that into the intake. And it will give us these figures again, but exactly the same. It's 0 0.024 and 0 0.02. So again, the difference is 20%. Now 20%, what this means now is that your proportional absolute intake, in proportion, the absolute intake, if this was 100, a factor of 100, 7.2, this would be a factor of 167, 12. And that's where that 1.67 comes into. Remember we couldn't multiply by two to carry twice the number of smaller cars? We had to multiply by 1.67, that's because of that. Because your larger cow will actually takes in more grass. And relative intake is much less. And your proportional relative intake, if it was 100 for this cow here, it's 20% larger for this cow here. And that translates into body condition differences, 2.9, 90%, and 2.4, 70% there. What it means is that it's, it's, just a, it's just a ratio, proportional. Okay, your absolute intake here is 7.2. Now, if we assume that to be 100, a ratio of 100, that would be 67% higher for 12. So you, you're just you're arbitrarily setting that at 100? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's an arbitrary. So if you, what do you, if you divide 12 by 7.2, what do you get? One point six seven, and that's it there. We can always come back to this if you don't understand. I think it just takes time to digest a little bit. So basically, what I'm saying is that the small frame cow has an unfair advantage, and the large frame cow is genetically handicapped because of that intake relative to size. Your relative intake is larger for a small cow. Your absolute intake is larger for a large cow. So there's no doubt that larger cows eat more grass, but in proportion to their size, they eat less. And that's why their body condition is always poorer, and that's why their fertility will be lower under the same conditions. Now, I hope I haven't come travel a couple of thousand miles to come and confuse you. Because it's not confusing. It's, it's so simple that it can be confusing because we, one doesn't think in those terms. But it's extremely simple. Now I want to get, just get a little bit back here. Okay. Now we come to a situation where we have to, we have to buy bulls from someone or we have to select our own bulls. Now let's assume that we have a, for sake of this argument, that we have an average cow size of 400 in our herd, kilograms, 880 pounds. Let's say that's the average. If that is the case, then you'll have some cows weighing 300 and you'll have some cows weighing 500. You all agree with that. You get that variation. Okay. Now, I'm going to I'm going to take three bulls from three cows. I'm going to tell you one bull gained 0.5 kilograms, another bull gained 0.8 kilograms from weaning to a year of age. 0.5, half a pound, half a kilogram, and 0.8 of a kilogram, half a pound or 0.8 of a pound. Which bull would we select? No, if we're selecting for growth rate, which bull would we select? 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. 
Okay. Because you know that growth rate is important. Okay. This, this bull from this cow gained 0.5, and that bull from that cow gained 0.8. Now, which is more efficient? Uh, 0.5. You follow what I'm saying? So we have to take size into consideration when you select. That bull probably has to gain 0.9 to be equally efficient. That's in the same herd. So that's a big difference between half a pound and 0.9 of a pound in terms of growth rate. But it's impossible. This bull is unlikely to gain 0.9 where this one gains 0.5 because of the intake, restrictions in terms of intake. So he probably gained less. Even if it was 0.6, we'd still select him. But look at the difference in efficiency here. A very big difference, 30% difference in efficiency between those two animals here. So what all the information do you need when you select that bull? The pound size, the sire size? If I just select a bull, I'll just go and look for the bull. I'll just look at that package, I will fully fill that package. Okay. I think that would be, uh, if you had more uh, very accurate information, or not accurate, appropriate information, let's put it that way, then one could use it in terms of um, birth weight, but which bulls do you think will have a high birth weight? The 8 and 5 package or the 9 and 10 package? Eight and five. Nine, uh, high birth weight? 8 and 5 or 9 and 10? I think you'd be more fertile. No, in terms of birth weight, which right. bull would have... Oh, would, smaller, yeah, 8, eight and 5, yeah, smaller, that's right. So all those factors are taken into consideration. So one can't really go wrong, and that's what I would suggest to people. If you have to go and select a bull, don't even look at the figures. Forget it, because those figures are inappropriate anyway. And if they're accurate, inappropriate, accurate figures, what does that mean? If you're measuring an inappropriate criteria, very accurately, it means that the same as speeding up the, uh, accelerating the speed of a car on the wrong road. You're accelerating the speed of a car on the wrong road. You know, get to the end result, which is, which is where you don't want to be much quicker. So when you're selecting bulls, you don't look at EPDs? You just throw them out the window? I wouldn't look at EPDs, no. I'd do it differently. I, I have other criteria I would select bulls on. How do you, I mean, uh, if, the, if the only information they've got is EPDs, or, or do you look at actuals? I mean, or do you require If, if the only information is EPDs, I'd disregard that and I'd just look at the package. But I'm not saying that there, aren't, there are accurate figures we just have to use different criteria of measuring it. And we'll come to that later. Accurate measurements of, of cross conversion efficiency. But without those figures that I'm talking about, I would just look at the package, how full that package is. And I assume that they had the same treatment. The fuller package, the fullest package is the best animal. Most efficient glass converter. Do you, do you want the birth weight too? Or no, I'm not interested in that. Not well, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be interested in that. I'm pretty sure that that 8 and 5 package will not give you carbon problems, whereas 9 and 10 probably will. Okay, now we've selected, the, we've talked about selecting bulls at weaning. Let's assume now that we're back in a conventional situation. When we were selecting the largest, the, 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 the fastest going bulls, or the largest bulls at 12 months, or whatever the case may be. Okay, let's look at 12 months uh, equal weaning efficiency. We talked about that earlier. We had 300, 400, 500, 600 kilogram cows, and that's a required weaning weight for equal efficiency. So a 300 kilogram cow giving you 150 kilogram weaner is as efficient as a 600 kilogram cow giving you a 250. So the 600 kilogram cow doesn't have to weigh wean a calf 300 kilograms. It's unlikely because she doesn't have enough feed intake. So per kilogram of grass that she takes in, they are equally efficient. And what's the difference between 250 and 150? It's 1.67. If you multiply 150 by 1, 1.67, you get 250. Or divide 250 by 1.67, you get 150. And that's the relationship between metabolic size, intake. Okay, now let's assume we have, we have four uh, uh, cows here that produce us bull calves. Which bull calf in the, would normally be selected? The one that weighs 250, 220, 187, 150. 250. They're equally efficient, okay. Now this bull calf is gonna produce your heifer calves. Heifers. And I want my heifers to be mature, sexually mature at 12 months, so I can breed them at 14 to 15 months. So around about 12 months, yearling age, 
they have to be 60% mature. That's the figure that everyone talks about. That's probably right. So at, 12, at 15 months or 12 months, they have to weigh 60% of the mature size. Okay. Now this heifer, the bull I'm going to produce, is going to produce heifers that win 250, but have to weigh 360. The difference between 250 at weaning and 360 at yearling is 110 kilograms. This one has to produce 180 kilogram, which is 60% of that. But the difference in weight is only 3. And he has 53 and he has 80. Now which animals, the larger ones or the smaller ones, are able to reach sexual maturity and physiological maturity at 12 months of yearling much easier? Obviously these. These can do it, but how much do you have to feed them to be able to do it? But that's what we're selecting for. So we have to advise criteria that identify the most efficient animal, regardless of size. It might not be this one. It might be one in between here. Regardless of size, we have to select the most efficient bulls that will give us the most efficient grass converting cows. And all we have to do then on the cow, we have to breed for hormonal balance. And then we have a perfect cow. All we have to do then is breed for hormonal balance. Testosterone in the bull, estrogen in the cow. The, the, the balance between growth and sex hormones. If a cow has inherently good body condition and she has a good hormonal balance, she will be fertile. Same with a bull. 